Hi everyone, I'm Steven, a customer and AI solutions engineer at Acceler AI. In this video, I'll be going through our setup of the Orange Pi 5 Plus with our M.2 card. So I have it here, let me just switch to my hands. Yeah, this is the Orange Pi 5 Plus and this is our M.2 card. But if you actually, if you buy this on our webshop, it's gonna look slightly different. It's gonna look like this. This cooler is actually um, a little sneak peek of what the next generation cooler may look like, but we're still evaluating this under properly straining conditions. So this may not be what the actual product looks like. So yeah, for this Pi, I've put this little feet on here because I don't like electronics touching and scratching my desk. So let's just start setting it up, shall we? Um, I bought this, this SD card. Uh, it's a 256 gigabytes. You really don't need that much. My colleague Victor actually wrote an extensive bring up guide for this orange Pi, which we'll be following. Here it says, basically download this image and use Bolina Etcher to install it. So let's start doing that. So I've already downloaded the image and unpacked it for you so that you don't have to wait for it. So here it is, Orange Pi 5 Plus. Load it, awesome, select target. There's just one thing, that's my SD card reader. Very good, and then let's flash. It's a big thing, yes, I'm sure, go flash. All right, so with 93%, it took a few minutes. It's just flashes, then validates, and it is, Done, yep, here we go. So I've got the SD card, push that in, start hooking everything up. So this HDMI cable actually has three HDMI ports and one of the three is an input. I always forget which one, so I just grab the middle one because I know that that one's an output. Internet, power, a keyboard. And then it should put up as soon as it has power after a minute. So there's a little red light over there. There you go, it starts flashing. And then let me move this camera to the orange pie, actually. Yeah, so this boot takes a minute. Afterwards, we're just gonna boot into the desktop right away. We have a mouse, we have a desktop. There it is, awesome. So, okay, I'm actually going to SSH into this from my PC because I like that more. You don't have to, you can just use the terminal here. But I want to SSH, so let me just check the IP. So let me swap to my screen. Okay, so we're in. So let me SSH to it. The username is always orange pie, and then my 192.168.88.216. The password is, oh yeah, I want to add that. The password is also orange pie, and then we're in. So if we want to clone the SDK, we actually first need to generate an SSH key. So there's this. SSH key gen minus T, I usually use this command. Uh, just hit enter a few times and then vim SSH or whatever terminal, whatever editor you like to use, ID and then pub. So I'm just gonna copy this entire thing. Our Voyager SDK, go to your own settings. We have this SSH and GPG keys. Everybody needs to do this by the way, because if you want to clone your a repository from Git, you need to say, yeah, I actually know that this device is mine. I'm just gonna call it Orange Pi 2 because I have one in there already and then push it in there. So I need to authenticate. Let's just skip forward on this because you're not gonna get to see my authentication code. Let's go back to the Voyager SDK because we want to clone it. So here's the Voyager SDK, I'm just gonna grab code, SSH, and then completely clone this, gonna exit out of this, and then git clone that thing. Yes, I trust it, because it's my own company. You should trust it too. So we need to install Linux headers. We need to do this command over here. It doesn't really matter from which folder you do it. So orange pie as password. And it's just gonna run for a second. And afterwards, I'm just gonna look at the guide again, modify the configuration file. Okay, so we're gonna open this. Okay, so there it is. So now we go into configuration and config, so this. So I'm gonna use Vim and find this libmolly thing. So if I press slash, I can, that's basically fine. So libmolly. Oh, libmolly, there it is. If I press enter, I get my cursor back. If I press I, I can actually input something. I'm just gonna comment it out. Press escape, press flash again, libmolly. Press enter and then press N to find the next one. There's one more, I, escape, 
slash litmoly, enter, and yeah, that's all. So escape colon wq, which means right quick. And there we are. So we can start installing. Uh, so we need to use a user and a token. I'm not going to show you mine. You need to get your own. Um, yeah, so let's just start installing. So yeah, I blurred out my token here, but I'm just going to install it. I installed it previously here, so it's going to be very quick. Expect like 45 minutes, one hour-ish, I think, install time. It depends on your host and on your internet speed, so it's a little iffy how long it's going to take. But yeah, so this is going to be pretty quick. Okay, there we are. So we're installed, let's follow the guide further. There's a bunch of things in pseudo DMS tag and there's solutions. Okay, cool. So we just run this. I don't know about you, but I'm not a big reader. So I'm just always just pushing commands that look all right. Just install it. If it works, cool. I don't need to read any further. If it doesn't install, then I'm gonna start reading. This is horrible advice, but you know, it works for me. Okay, so we're gonna get this output that is correct. So we're gonna run this and just copy paste this as well. I see a bunch of warnings. Now modify the ranges behind this. Uh, PCIe FE50, there we go. And then ranges, why is the ranges? Ranges, so I'm gonna remove this line and add this line in here. Whoops, need to make sure, uh, need to make sure my formatting stays correct. So it just copied it with enters, new lines, which is very annoying to me. Just hit backspace a few times. That's what happens when you write a pure, pretty guide. The guide is going to make it pretty with extra things. Okay, so we edit the ranges. Anything else? Nope, we'll just write it and then recompile the device tree. Okay, that one's super quick. Backup original dbt and move. Okay, so in our boot dbt, boot dtb, rock chip. So let's see what's in there. Very good. So let's move our boot rock chip and then plus dtb and move that to boot d. TV rock chip backup dot DTB, whatever I'll remember the name. Oh, permission and I need to put a pseudo in there. That makes absolute sense. And then move the RK into here. Uh, DTB pseudo again. Failed ownership operation not permitted. It's DTS. Yeah, that's DTS. All right, reboot finished. Let's SSH back into it. Orange Pi. For JSDK. Let's see, I got some general system configuration. Yeah, that's all fine. We need to source the environment first. I always forget that one. So we can run deploy and then put the network, or we can just, uh, since it's a part of our model zoo, we already compiled it for you. So we can do download pre compiled. It will be 8L Coco on an X. And that's obviously going to be much, much faster. Because otherwise, it's going to deploy the entire model on the Orange Pi. And Rockchip is not a super fast processor. It's also not bad. It's just that downloading is always faster. So let's just run this. So this Accelerator Configure Board that actually says that we're going to put the MVM, which is the matrix vector multiplier, at 30% utilization. The reason we need to do that is because the MVM is actually a part of our core that uses very big spike power. So sometimes the power spikes a bit high when it loads a lot of data at the same time. Um, with this 30% thing, we limit that spike. So we make sure the orange spike can always deliver enough power to the M.2 card. 
it's not gonna limit our performance by a lot actually so it's fine so first we're gonna run it with no display and then afterwards i will swap to my orange pie screen and actually run a little test with a live camera as well okay so that makes absolute sense to no such file because i forgot to download the media because in this command over here you do minus minus media which downloads a bunch of images which i did not do so let me do it right now install the sh media maybe i need to maybe i need to deactivate my environment first there we go we're downloading artifacts so this is just a few example videos right that you can run your uh, first initial test on okay, let me just stop it there i just need one video anyway Okay, now it's communicating with the device and it's saying that it's running, it's detecting. Awesome. All right, so we're inside the Orange Pi. So let's go into the Voyager SDK and source our environment again. And then activate. And yeah, so I'm just gonna remove my build folder. That's where all my artifacts are to show you that there's three ways of deploying a model. So we're running something from our model zoo. It's gonna be Yolo V8L. And there's three ways. So one is inside the inference.py script. If I give it my YOLO V8L Coco ONMX, it's just gonna run deployment and then it's gonna run. So I'm not gonna do that now, but we can also just run deploy only and YOLO V8L Coco ONMX. And this will run a deployment without running inference. So you can build it like, for example, when you're shooting a video. Um, if you run make help, by the way, run make help then it will show you all of the models that are inside the model zoo there we go so you have this yolo v8 and i suppose you pose yolo v8 and weapons that's some cascaded stuff you can scroll through this yourself if you prefer so this is our entire model zoo that you see um and for each of these we actually have a download pre-deployed uh function so if i do yolo v8 l coco on an x we already built it and put it on this website. So it's super fast to download and boom, we're ready. So let's start running it, shall we? So we run the inference, inference.py, uh, YOLO V8L Coco ONMX. We're gonna run through my USB camera that I have here, which is my zero ONMX, but I want it full screen. So I'm gonna do window full screen, full screen, there we go. So let's give it a second to load up. Ah, there we go. Here we have our YOLO V8L object detection. Now you can see these three uh, little things actually on this side over here. Uh, this core temperature, obviously that's super important for us right now because as I said before, this is an experimental uh, cooler. The CPU usage shows that we only use 30% of the CPU, 31, it's uh, rising a little bit. And then the end-to-end -end FPS, that's kept to 30 right now because the camera only sends 30 FPS. Now, while running this, I just remembered that I did something wrong. I didn't set the MVM limiter. So I'm actually surprised with how well this is still running. So let me just press Q here, which will stop it. And then I will show you how to put the MVM limiter in there. It's inside our uh, tutorial. Exact same command, but I'm gonna use an environment variable. Let me just, it's accelera configure board equals comma 30. So this sets the MVM limit to 30%. Okay, so these numbers over here, you can actually remove them as well. If you, if you want to show your demo and you don't want to show these numbers or they are a bit different from what you expect, because end to end is really from camera until the screen. So it can slow down in all the parts in between. Maybe your host is super fast, but your camera is very slow, or maybe the rendering of the screen is really, really slow, which bottlenecks it. So let me show you. Let me queue out of this. And then if we do inference.py minus minus help, then it will actually show us all of these options. So show system FPS, device FPS, host FPS. So defaultly, this is on the system FPS. So let's just turn that off. So no show system FPS. We can do the same with no show CPU usage, I think. And then no show them. There we go. So now if we run it, all of these clocks should be gone. All 
All right, there we are. And now we just see Voyager SDK on the bottom and no other clocks, nothing else. So this is how you run something on the Orange Pi with our M.2. I hope you like it. If you do, leave a comment or visit us at the community. Uh, yeah, thank you for watching.